What's going on guys? Black Decent. <clears throat> Wanted to have a quick chat in response to some a comment from one of my viewers over on Discord and he was having he had some questions about situations specifically and uh, based on the context in which I personally might use, you know, a plate carrier and a battle belt together and, and things of that nature. He, I guess he kind of wanted me to elaborate on it, if you will. So that's that's what I'm going to attempt to do right here. And first, I'll start by showing you kind of the theory in the way that I set up my belt. And that is my theory with setting up my belt was that I wanted it to be able to be utilized alone and still have the basics that I would that I would want to have, you know, on a belt. So I'll have my handgun holster a cat tourniquet, an eye fact with chest seals, trauma bandage, etc., and then one rifle mag, and then two pistol mags. So, and then I also have here a roll-up dump pouch. You can throw a water bottle in there, whatever. I do still have some space if I want to add like a water bottle carrier or something like that. Still have some flexibility there. And this does live in my kit bag because I do enjoy having the, the flexibility or the options that it adds to a kit. So that's that's why it's here. And also too, I can pull the Safariland ALS holster completely off of here and thread my everyday carry uh, belt on here or thread it onto my belt. And then I can use that as well if I don't want to carry the whole belt for whatever reason. If I just need to get some clearance on my, on my side arm and get it to drop down a little bit, I can I can utilize that to do so and then it'll clear out if I'm running like a rucksack or something like that with a waist strap that way I don't have to deal with those interferences because I, I've seen how that plays out and typically it's going to cause issues for you but that aside the other thing is that the, the chest rig is it's got to stay you know the chest rig is very valuable and it, and it certainly plays a major role in in all the stuff that we're talking about here because you're gonna be able to be lighter and more agile and you're gonna be able to cover greater distance without without taking on that punishment of the additional weight of, of body armor and a plate carrier. And so to be a little bit more specific in some of the context that I would consider armor would be, you know, if I was defending a, a fixed position, whether it be my home or, or whatever, uh, homestead defense, defending a buddy's property or whatever, the neighborhood, if you're on a neighborhood watch or something and things got chaotic and you had to set up checkpoints or control points or whatever, then I could see most certainly where body armor would be something that that I would probably choose to utilize in that scenario. Another thing would be if, if there was a certain type of a situation where it was going to be a direct action type of event where it's like, hey, this is what's happening it's pretty much guaranteed to, to be a shit show, then yeah, I could see where I would, would opt to go ahead and armor up in that situation. Another thing that, that I would, another situation I would consider armor to be a, a, you know, a grab and go type of deal would be if we're gonna be operating out of automobiles or four wheelers or side by sides or whatever, if we're gonna be using them to patrol or, or to carry us to and from a, a situation or or some type of an objective, then sure, absolutely, you know, because the, the theory there is that I'm not having to, or at least it's not planned for me to have to utilize this as as a man portable system, you know, as, as Barry Independent would say, and meaning I'm not having to walk this shit everywhere, you know, strapped to, strapped to my back. So another another consideration for me is, you know, am I gonna need like a large sustainment loadout, like uh, something like the Crossfire, you know, DG3, a 55 liter ruck or a medium Alice or something like that. If I have to get into a situation where it's a 48 hour, 72 hours, you know, long distance type of scenario where I'm gonna be on foot covering multiple miles, then that's where to me, the chest rig comes back to the forefront. You know, and probably not going to be running the full Batman belt at that point either. I'm probably going to maybe if I if I'm hell bent on taking my my sidearm, I'm just going to pull 
the Safari Land holster off and slap it on my on my EDC belt. And and I'll just roll like that if I just feel like I gotta have my handgun, which generally that's kind of how I lean because that's just that's just the way I do shit. But you know, that's that's just me, that's just personal preference. But that aside, if you wanted to forego the pistol altogether, then that would be fine. Then you could just say the hell with that and run chest rig and then run your sustainment kit, you know, whether it be a 55 liter or whatever. You know, if you had to be gone for a while, then you may need more sustainment than that. That's all situationally dependent. But, you know, that. And then also another consideration would be one that I think should be avoided pretty much at all costs, but that would be like a CQB or house to house urban environment where, where you're having to clear structures or anything like that, then at that point, I think that, I think most of us will probably agree that armor is, is going to be a must in that situation. I think that most people would probably even opt for side plates and a ballistic helmet as well in a situation such as that. And <clears throat> like I say, I'm not an expert at, at any of this stuff, but I do, I am a student and I'm a student of history, and I, I like to pay attention to different things. And, and one of the things that I noticed um, from specifically the conflict or the war in Afghanistan was just from watching actual footage from, from our soldiers over there, and I've seen them going through some of the harshest terrain known to man, you know, in the mountains of Afghanistan. And, and they were, I've seen them running around with full body armor kit, and like medium Molly two rucksacks or medium Alice's and they're trying to navigate this harsh ass terrain and and trying to, you know, fire and maneuver and, and engage in, in combat with Taliban or whoever the hell, you know, the indigenous forces were at that particular point in time. And I mean at the end of the day we just have to understand that they're the that is going to degrade your performance. I don't care who you are. I don't care how damn strong you are or how, you know, how fast you run a mile. When you get put in a situation like that and you're, you're having to carry all of that stuff on you, it's, it's going to take a toll on you. Even if you disregard the weather, heat, or anything like that, just the shit that you're carrying in that type of a terrain or environment is going to, it's going to take away from your performance. I mean, it, it's just the way it is. I mean, we're just humans at the end of the day. So with that being the case, that's another consideration that I, I think of when we start having this conversation is like, what is your terrain, you know, and how long are you planning on being there? I mean, that, the questions go on and on. And these are questions that you're going to have to to determine the answers to for yourself. And then you're going to have to make the best decision that you possibly can with the information that you have available to you and just hope that it works out for you. But there's no yes or no to any of it. It's, it's more of a, you know, it depends as they say, you know, it's kind of like a, a meme or a joke. It depends. Yeah, it, it definitely does depend. It depends on a lot of different stuff too. So, but I, I hope that that kind of helps to shed some light on my thought process behind it. And as far as running the plate carrier and the belt together, I, I've never had any issues running the plate carrier and the belt together in, in carbine course or, or anything like that. The interferences between the plate carrier, if you properly set it up and you understand how to set your stuff up that where it works for you and, and shit's not hitting other shit and, and things aren't binding up or catching and snagging, then you know the plate carrier and the battle belt, they, they work really well together for me. Also, that being said, the chest rig and the belt also work really well for me. The way that I've set them up and putting in the time with them and, and learning some lessons from, from you know, having some, some weird setups and stuff not working out for me and me having to go back and change it. You know, that that has taught me some things. And, and since I have made the proper adjustments to, to different items, the, those two work really well for me as well together so really when i start seeing issues is when i start adding in a rucksack or anything like that that's when i start seeing different issues start to arise 
as far as with the kid. Like for me personally, I'm not going to particularly want to run a plate carrier with a rucksack. You know, I, I, I'm just not. Uh, that's not going to be my first choice. I may have to, you know, and it's good to be able to or to figure out and understand how that's going to work for you. But it's going to be less than ideal, I feel like. So from what I've seen, though, the chest rig works pretty well with, with the rucksack. Uh, I haven't had many issues with that. Now, the belt, depending on what kind of pack you're running, sometimes there's interferences there. Sometimes the the pack will want to push the belt down. And I know people may, may mention of suspenders. I haven't tried them yet, but I, I guess that's another option. But yet again, when you get into suspenders and stuff like that, you're adding more straps. You're adding more material. You're adding more shit to your shoulders. So there's a kind of a give and take for all of it. At what point are you gonna say, you know, I, that's enough, I gotta do something different. So these are all questions that I can't answer for you. You have to you have to go out here and mess with your stuff and drag it out and put it on and take it apart and put it back together again and strip this off and toss it in a box and, and put something else on or, or just leave that space open and et cetera, et cetera. And to me, that's kind of, that's that's just, not only is that just part of it, that's really a major part of it, but it's also kind of fun and interesting to be able to learn that stuff for yourself because if you just go out here and you look at how some other guy set his shit up, now that may work for you. It may be the best setup for you particularly, maybe, but it may not. It may suck for you. It may be some shit that you would never want to utilize. So you got to put in the time for yourself. You can get a lot of information from, from different people on YouTube and different instructors and different courses and stuff that you may go and take and even interacting with other buddies who are like-minded who are building out kit and stuff like that and and you know and checking out their stuff and getting hands on time with their stuff and, and picking their brains and that's that's fun as well and it's very important to do that but it, at the end of the day you're going to have to put this shit on and walk it out yourself to figure out how it works for you or if it works for you or if it's total bullshit and you got to go back to the drawing board and sell all this shit and try to buy something else or you know, mothball this and buddy kit it and get another setup or whatever. Uh, speaking of armor, before I go, it is very important, in my opinion, that you find, number one, armor plates that are going to defeat the threats that you perceive that you may see in your general area or the activities that you are going to be engaging in, legal activities, of course. But... Also, weight is a major consideration. I know that the steel versus ceramic shit is still going on. People still buy steel armor. People still run steel armor. I still have a set of steel plates, level three plus, multi-curve, frag guard, all that shit, you know, from come and take it armor. I also have ceramic plates. But what I'm saying is that just because they're ceramic plates doesn't mean that they're going to be lightweight. Because there are ceramic plates that are seven, eight pounds, especially when you start looking at the level four stuff. So pay attention to the weight of the plates at, when you're buying them. We can talk about NIJ certification, all that stuff. But you figure out what, as far as the specs, are going to be important to you, whether it's NIJ certified and all that. There's other good plates that aren't NIJ certified that actually stop bullets. So whatever, you, you can go down that rabbit hole on your own. But what I am saying is that weight is most certainly going to be a consideration that you should that you should take account for. You better consider the weight of them. And also to consider the weight of the plate carrier and the setup of it, because there are some that are more comfortable than others. And there are some that are certainly lighter than others. And you got to basically define what you want that plate carrier to do and how much shit you plan on carrying on it and then you go from there so you figure out what plates you need and what size is going to work for you and then you basically are going to size and scale your plate carrier to those plates because you know that's that's the way it goes because they got different size plate carriers and they're based off of the the armor plates that you intend to put inside of them so that, that's how that works. But definitely consider the weight of that stuff because all every pound you can save is going to matter. 
when you start talking about armor, especially any kit, it's going to matter. The weight's going to matter. But if you can shave, you know, two pounds off a set of, I've seen level four plates that are pushing eight pounds ceramic. And I've seen ceramic and composite blend level four plates that are, you know, five and a half, six pounds. So, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but I mean, you look at it, if you got some six pound plates, a pair of them, you're at 12. If they're eight pounds a piece, seven and a half pounds a piece, you're pushing 15, 16 pounds before you even put them in a carrier or add any ammo or anything like that to the system. So it's definitely something you want to think about because anybody who's worn armor at all knows that it is not fun, but you can make it a little less shitty if you pay attention to what you're purchasing. So... All right, I hope that helps, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. Be sure to check out the link tree and all that stuff and come over to the Discord, and we can continue conversations over there as well. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm out.